In your consultation, there's two types of communication. One is effective. And the second type, take a wild guess at it. Ineffective. Okay, ineffective. So now let's talk about what we mean by both of these. When you look at communication, here's 100% of communication, another 100% of communication. 20% of effective communication would be talking, and 80% would be what? Listening. listening, excellent. Listening. An effective consultation is listening. Yet, an effective consultation is the art of questioning. You want to control the conversation? You ask questions. Sam, did you see Brokeback Mountain? It was great. I'm so glad it finally won an Oscar. Did you see the Oscars? God, the, I mean, the Oscars. Did you see what he hear? Did you hear what he had to say? Blah, blah, blah. I saw Brokeback Mountain. I loved it. Well written. Loved the men's hair. Did you see the high fades and the low fades? They're awesome in those men's, men's hair. Bring in your boyfriend. Who took over the conversation right there? I did. You see what I did? I listened to what they had to say, but I, my response was based back on hair. It's 80% hair, 20% personal. Let me repeat that. 80% hair, 20% personal when they get to your chair. In other words, Sam, you got a little personal in there? You bet I do because that shows genuine concern. It shows you're a real person. Now look at ineffective communication. 20% of this, you're going to get this now, 20% of ineffective communication would consist of what? Listening. Thank you, you got it. Would consist of listening, and 80% of ineffective would be what? Talking. Talking. Two reasons why people left that salon and came here. You want to know why? Because they cut their hair too short, and they talk too much about themselves. Let me repeat that. They got their hair cut too short. The person didn't what? Listen. And secondly, talked about themselves the entire time. That person got up and said, I'm never going back to that person or back to that salon. Round of applause if you're with me so far on this. All right, good. All right, now back to the consultation. Do you, do you use a mousse, a lotion, or a gel? If she says she uses a mousse, what's that tell you? Volume. Thank you, Lois. If she says lotion, what's that tell you? Smooth and sleek and soft. If she uses a gel, what's that tell you? She likes it hold. So guess what I'm going to do? Now it's time for me to service her. Now I'm going to have her go change into a gown. Guess what I'm doing while, I'm, while she's changing into a gown? I'm getting all the product that I'm going to use now goes to my station. My station was clean, had nothing on it when she sat there. Nothing. Had nothing on it. What I did was I went to the community back bar for styling products and grabbed everything I needed, put it in the bag, and now what's sitting here? Vincent Salon retail bag with everything I'm going to use in it. She sits and I go shampoo her. What am I talking about at the shampoo bowl? Shampoo and conditioner. When she comes back... I am now reaffirming why I used that. I told her what I was using, how I was using it. Now I'm talking to her about why to use that. Everybody with me so far? And then I turn around and guess what I'm pulling out of the bag? I'm pulling out everything I'm going to use on her. This bag has been specially bagged for you based upon our consultation. These are what I'm going to use on you today and I'm explaining everything that I use. Now you have a choice to take whatever you'd like to take home today. But I want, I'm explaining to you why it's important. You must understand, Erica, product is not an option, it is a necessity. So now, does that help to answer your question, how I got all the products to my station that fit her needs and my expectations? Yeah. Oh, this is huge. This is huge. The consultation builds your wealth. The consultation sets up your integrity.
The consultation sets up your knowledge. The consultation sets up your honesty, your trust. That's where it begins. Are you cool with this, guys? Mm -hmm. All right. Then I said, ask her, are you willing to participate with me in the haircut? She says, yes. Here's how I need you to participate with me in order for me to give you a great haircut. I need you to keep your head exactly where I put it. Should you move your head while I'm cutting it, I might cut a big hole or make a big mistake, and we don't want that, do we? No, no, no. <laughs> so now, what's she going to do with her head? Keep it. Have you ever cut somebody, and they're like following you, following the scissors, and they're like this? Or you ever cut somebody, and they're like this, and they're measuring, and they're like, this one's longer than that. Disconnection. <laughs> you better be pulling from the exact same spot, and then remember that those are rounded and asymmetrical. Yeah. Chances are, hey, your haircut, two simple statement, my friends, your hair, haircut. <laughs> Hi. Your haircut will balance for you and function for you. Haircuts today do not have to blend. When they, listen to Sam's choice of words, when they blend, they are too vintage looking. Interesting, isn't it? Who wants to look around? Did I say old looking? No. No, but what's vintage mean? Old. 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 In other words, nobody wants to walk around. But if now, my friends, listen. If she demands it blends, what do you think I'm going to do? Blend it. You bet I am. But what I want her to understand is I walk and talk that. That's why I love what I do. But eventually, I'll blend her, but eventually, she's going to come around to my side of the fence. Eventually. Why? Because she's going to get the best blended haircut she's ever had. And she's going to know... Sam is awesome. In other words, I'm going to win this person through my communication and technical skills. Secondly, I need you to keep your hand underneath the cape. You bring your hand underneath, out from underneath the cape and you measure and feel, I might cut you or cut me and we don't want that. No, 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 no. <laughs> Remember, I'm going to give you a very precise, uneven haircut. Tell them, my friends. Tell them. Put your hands out and do this. The reason I'm giving you a very precise, uneven haircut is because if I cut it blunt, it falls. Because you use a round brush and you use mousse, you like volume, we need to soften your ends. Is this making sense, Erica? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now, do you have a cell phone? Yes, I do. Should you choose to answer your cell phone, I'm going to take a step back and wait until you're done with your conversation. When you're done with your conversation, I will take a step in and I will continue my haircut. Should you choose to answer your cell phone and have a conversation when my next guest comes in at their scheduled time, I will need to move to that guest and I'll work you, continue to work you in between guests. How are you feeling? Sam, you really do that? You bet I did. You bet I did. There is nothing worse than them working on it, doing on a cell phone and you're trying to cut around the cell phone. You know what I call that, my friends? Permission to be perfectly honest with you. I call that winning the client over. You choose to win the client over. So you choose to let them get away with whatever they want to get away with on your chair. Why? Because you want them back in your chair. And you think that's what's going to get them back? You want to know what's really going to get them back? Your communication skills and your technical, thank you, your technical skills are what's going to get them back. Because if I don't have that conversation and the phone rings, she's going to answer it. Now I'm going to be back here very frustrated. Who's in the mirror? You. Thank you. Who's on stage? You. you. Now she's looking in the mirror and she sees me all frustrated and pissed off. What's her little voice thinking? I don't like doing her hair. I'm sure her little voice starts playing little games with her head. Is this making sense, guys? So in other words, if I had this conversation, she's going to pick up the cell phone and go, Hi, Samantha. Yeah, the kids are there. Yep, the clothes are on the bed. The lunches are in the refrigerator. Take them to the park. Listen, Sam's cutting my hair. Let me call you back, okay? All right, bye. How cool is that? Because she knows what? How my arena works. Are you following this, guys? Okay. Everything that I did on her was written down on the card. Guess what was on the card? Head shapes. So what did my team do? They drew out the haircut. The card went to the front desk. Information went into the computer. But the head sheet, the head, the card stayed there, went into a file. Now that person came back in. The day's file hedge cards were pulled out, went to that person's station. Now that person said, I want the exact same haircut you gave me. Well, I'm glad you said that because I happen to have it right here. This salon is hot. These people stay on top of it. 
This person knows exactly what he did to me last time. He even drew it out. You got to go to Vincent's salon. Are you following me here, guys? Mm -hmm. Now, this is going to be critical in the future. Why do you think that? I'll tell you why. Every person that sits in your chair from this day forward is going to be very valuable. Very valuable. Because guess what? They're going to start extending their appointment times without you even suggesting it. Why? Economy. Economy and money. They're going to want to save the money. So think about that. So here's what I want to do. I'm going to help you save the money so that my book opens to gets the people that are waiting on my waiting list to get into me. Oh, this is huge. Huge. How many of you have ever been to a party before? You ever been to a party and you're around like 10 people, right? Mm -hmm. And you're going, this conversation's going nowhere or this conversation is crazy, right? Mm -hmm. If you want to control a, a conversation, what do you need to do? Ask questions. Yeah, you ask questions and you can control the conversation. Just keep asking a series of questions. Ask the questions that you want, you know the answers or where you want to lead the conversation to and you will control the conversation. So anytime with a, uh, with a uh, guest that's sitting in a chair and the conversation's not going anywhere, ask or it's going to a place where you don't want it to go. Like at a salon last week, they were saying, Sam, I have a guy that just talks, he's like, it's embarrassing. You know, I said, well, I said you need to fire him. He goes, well, I don't like, want to fire him because I really need him. I said, well, you need him for the wrong reason because he's disrupting your people next door to you. The two stylists keep complaining about him because of what he talks about and how he talks. So I said, what you need to do is you need to pull him aside and have a serious talk with him and let him know, listen, I'm going to give you one opportunity, but I'm really having problems having you as a guest, and here's why. It's your conversation, the type of conversation you have. It's not professional, and I choose to keep my conversation professional. Can you do that for me? Well, yes, I can. Now I'm going to give you one more chance. If it happens again, I'm going to fire you as a client. I'm just going to ask you not to come back. And she says, well, how do I do that? I said, simple. You write him a letter. You let him know that all his future appointments have been canceled, and you're recommending two salons for him to go to. So I highly, highly recommend control, ask questions, and you will listen because questions force you to listen. Thank you. They force you to listen. Excellent. Give a round of applause. Thank you very much. Okay. Another observation. What about setting up your arena? How do you like that? Are you willing to, setting up would be the question, are you willing to participate in the haircut? How do you like that? Would you be willing to do that? Okay, so you're asking them what? To keep their what? Heads in still, okay. Number two, you're asking them to keep their hands where? Underneath, and that forces you to explain you're gonna give them a very precise, uneven haircut. It's going to balance for them, and it's gonna function, meaning it's gonna work for them. And thirdly, you're handling what? The cell phone. Now, I'm not quite sure what the policy is here in regards to a cell phone policy. Yet, sometimes, what I'm really trying to get you as a personal stylist behind the chair to help you to stop working around a cell phone. Why is it that the real estate deal happens at your, at your chair? Why is the lawyer conducting his business at your chair? All these business people doing that. Hey, you're trying to conduct business, and they're doing it on your time. That's not right. It, it really affects how you work with them. Cool? Here's why. Because if you allow that to happen, I guarantee you never sell that person retail. And you're choosing not to talk to them because they want to talk on their cell phone, so you just leave them alone. That's called winning the client over. It doesn't, it can't happen that way anymore. Take control of your profession. How long would you spend doing the consultation? I'd spend as long as they need. Let's well, say you only have 45 minutes to do the haircut, you know. Do you spend like 10 minutes? I mean. Okay, good question. Is this a new guest or previous guest, returning guest? Um, it's, well, say it's a new guest, we get an hour. I, sp I spend good 10, 15 minutes. Good 10, 15 minutes before I even take them to change a gown. So it de depends upon the response I get to all my questions. Some of them will be an essay and you'll have to short shorten them or some of them might be a yes or a no or a quick answer. So I'd say at least 10 to 15 minutes. Okay, that's very important. Sometimes if it's color, it's going to be a little bit longer consultation process, chemical, chemical service. Okay, great question. I love the fact that you book out longer for a new guest. That means that you're really talking about what are their goals and having a great strong consultation on them. The, by the way, setting up your arena, how many times do I do that with a guest? Only once. So every time they're new, 
That's when they get my whole arena spiel. After that, I never have to say it again. Now, some of you are sitting there and going, well, what if I have a migraine headache already? An existing client that's like that, Sam, then when they're getting their color processed and you have a new guest, you put them sitting right next to you. So now, what are they hearing? They're hearing all that consultation story, and now they're like coming back in your chair, and Miss Betty's like, oh, Sam, I must be your worst client. I'm on the phone all the time. Betty, 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 come here, Betty, Betty. Stop. Stop, Betty. I love you, Betty. I've been doing you for 20 years, Betty. I don't want you to do any, just be here, Betty. Now, what do you think Betty's going to do from this day forward? Thank you. She's not going to try to be on her cell phone. But I told her in a very nice way, and by the way, when I talk about these things, speak very nicely and very professional, positive framing everything. It's not you will sit still. And I'm sorry, but this is the way I work. No. It's not going to get you anywhere. You do it in a very sincere, nice, professional way.